Hey everyone, I was in charge of the Piaget's Theory of Cognitive Development, which was pages 97 to 113 in the textbook. So just to get into it, the summary of the text slide. Jean Piaget is a Swiss researcher from the 20th century. He is considered a constructivist, which means he believes individuals construct their own understanding rather than just making a mental copy of what they are introduced in the classroom, at home, and throughout their life. He believes knowledge is not memorized or copied like I just said. He thinks each individual develops in a unique mind. However, he does break up his four stages of cognitive development based on age. And his most famous, I guess, stage that is questioned and was thoroughly believed is his conservation task, which come from stage four that I will talk about later. When I introduce to you some of his work, I say take it with a grain of salt because much of his work doesn't align with current research or the data on cognitive development from the modern centuries, but we do still study him because he laid a very strong foundation for studying cognitive development in children and how children's brains develop as they get older. So in the next slide, these are the four stages, sensor motor stage, which is birth to two years, the pre-operational pre stage, two to seven years, concrete operational stage, which is seven to 11 years, and the formal operational stage, 12 plus years. So just a brief kind of overview of what he says child should be able to do in each stage. In the birth to two years, he says child, children will not be able to distinguish thought and action and they may present some ability to have symbolic thought and mental presentation of symbolic thought, which just means that they can mentally picture a glass of water when told a glass of water. However, they're still pretty much dependent on object permanence, which means they need to be able to see something in order to believe it is there. Pre-operational stage two to seven years old, children transition out of like an animist style of learning, which means kind of just giving life or emotions to inanimate objects and they cannot execute minor operations or follow just rules they are told. Children can still struggle with hierarchical classification, which just means that a student might not be able to understand that all corgis are dogs, but not all dogs are corgis, and that there are broader terms and then like smaller subcategories of those things. Uh, concrete operational stage, here Piaget believes children should be able to think logically and decenter, which means they see themselves as part of a world, not the world revolving around them. They should be able to execute sorting, collecting, and classifying reverse operations, which are all seen mostly in the math department. And abstract thinking is still very weak. Once you reach the formal operational stage, Piaget believes the foundation of abstract thinking should be developed. Children should be able to think independently, which means to him at least that children should not have to see an adult or whoever the teacher is actually do an action in order to be able to do them themselves. So you should be able to tell a student, go get the colored pencil and write this out, and they should be able to do it without having to at visually see the teacher do it first. Okay, moving on. I, like I said earlier, I'm just gonna go over some of the holes in his theory because modern research thoroughly contradicts a lot of what he said. Current research reveals that children can retain abstract concepts before concrete examples of them. And Piaget believed that this progression was actually reversed. And it wasn't until you were more mature in your brain development that you could think abstractly. Additionally, Piaget kind of underestimated the abilities of young children. As, you, as I mentioned earlier, in his second stage, it's the ages two to seven years old, and which is kind of a very large range. We know now that children's brains grow and develop the quickest at younger ages, and so to kind of put two to seven year olds all within the same like stage is kind of underestimating those older end five to seven years old ability. But on the contrary, he also overestimated the ability of adolescents. He kind of took too harsh of an idea of what formal operations are. And many adolescents 12 to however old after that didn't pass stage four, which led researchers to believe that his formal operation stage might just be a specialized cognitive development you develop in formal schooling. And obviously from this class, we know that formal schooling looks different in every different culture, both based on your country and your kind of smaller community. Therefore, the idea of like formal operations based on age is difficult now to measure because each community has a different tools for cognitive development. Yes, yeah, so I just, overall Piaget emphasis on progression of cognitive skills based on age kind of inhibited him from seeing the cultural diversity and how cognitive development looks different based on where your community is. 
how do we apply this in the classroom? So developmentally appropriate practice or DAP is just a method of education that emphasizes active par participation of students instead of passive participation. Passive participation looks like lecturing or just reading to your students or kind of carrying out every single activity instead of having them actively learn how to do it, discovery education, and working together. And really any sort of constructivist instruction, excuse me, where teachers minimize adult authority and don't always present themselves as the knowing everything. Instead, when students ask you a question, kind of retract it back to them and make them find the answer themselves instead of giving it directly to them or telling them they're wrong. This looks like answering questions with questions, doing an error analysis, asking a student, why did you think that, you know, and then it's kind of getting them to figure out why that thinking was wrong and also tangible materials. So obviously having some sort of physical representation, especially for younger kids, is super important in the Piaget's idea of what constructivist thinking and instruction looks like. Um, next slide is the image, text as image. This image I picked just kind of displays the four stages of cognitive development using the same symbol water and the same individual. So it connects those two ideas that your age is the main contributor in how you develop your abstract thinking abilities and your sensory motor orientation. Uh, as you see, the toddler kind of needs that physical representation of a piece of, of a water cup. And then the stage two, the child can kind of start thinking of water. In stage three, you start comparing what water looks like. And in stage four, you can thoroughly use the idea of water to learn other things or it's just a symbol for math, science, anything else. You have a thorough understanding that water is more than just what you drink. Finally, some takeaways, the conceptual takeaways. Children actively construct their knowledge rather than passively replicating it. Constructing knowledge occurs when children assimilate to new information into existing mental structures or change mental structures to fit new information. So that was a mouthful, and it just basically means when children have prior knowledge to something, it's, so, it's far easier for them to retain knowledge or kind of switch into a more advanced thinking. And the development of their construct knowledge is seen in universal stages of ma maturing and logical reasoning abilities. However, we know now that formal schooling varies per culture, therefore a child's formal operational thinking is unique and individual, and there's no real definition of what formal operations look like because it's so diverse. Takeaways, concrete ones. So all I really have for this slide is the constructivist instructions can be uh, a way to integrate Piaget's theory, providing hands-on learning experience, like I said, discovery learning, initiating discourse, or just thoroughly going into depth into each concept, and also integrating uh, public thinking and group learning activities. Children will be far more accepting to hearing things from their peers than a teacher because obviously a teacher can present a more authoritative presence. So having your students work together and come up with ideas through discovery learning can actually really help their cognitive development more than passive learning or just instructing your students on what to do. Thank you.